Hi, everybody. Ted Haggard here from the Storehouse in Colorado Springs. The Storehouse is the house church ministry of St. James Church. And uh, my wife and I, Gail, we've been married 45 years. We have five incredible children and five of the greatest grandchildren. And um, and so we're just enjoying life so much. We're living blessed and, and anointed by God. Uh, we are in Joshua, the second chapter today, and Joshua, the second chapter is about taking the land. OK, now, everybody, remember the process. Egypt is a type of living in the world. Pharaoh is a type of the devil. Miracles have to happen to dethrone the demonic gods in the world so that we can get out of the world and start living in God's kingdom. That translation happens when we're born again. Okay, then we become children of light, but we wander through the desert. All right. Then the lessons of the desert are taught to us about complaining or judging or or <clears throat> about spiritual authority, about growing in the word, about obedience, about selfishness, about stealing, about lying. All these different things are worked into us. Then it's time to go into the promised land. <clears throat> when it's time to go into the promised land, then there's a new series of principles the Lord gives us about taking the land. Because here in Joshua 2, the first thing they're going to do is take Jericho. All right. And to take Jericho, they want to know what's going on there. And when you go into the promised land, the promised land is where you get all the benefits that God has for you. You get the answers to prayer. You get the signs and wonders and miracles. You start operating in, in the gifts of the Spirit fully and all that type of thing. But you've got to take the land. And that's a violent process. But if you remember the lessons of being in the desert, then you'll be able to execute those processes effectively. So here, when Joshua secretly, uh, then Joshua secretly sent out two spies uh, from the Israelite camp. He instructed them, scout out the land on the other side of the Jordan River, especially around Jericho. <clears throat> so the two men set out and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there that night. OK, think about how that looks. All right. If they wouldn't have learned the lesson of being in the desert, people would have criticized these two guys for staying in the house of a prostitute and even being willing to relate to a prostitute. But they learned those lessons. They learned how God loves uh, and wants to work in the lives of everybody. Now we're living in a time when the Holy Spirit's been poured out on everybody. And so we respect everyone and we want everyone blessed. And here Rahab was a prostitute. The two spies spent the night there. But someone told the king of Jericho, some Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land as if it's a secret. Always remember, there's no such thing as a secret. So the king of Jericho sent orders to Rahab, bring out the men who have come into your house, for they have come here to spy out the whole land. Rahab had hidden the two men, but she replied, yes, the men were here earlier, but I don't know where they were from. They left the town at dusk as the gates were about to close. I don't know where they went. If you hurry, you can probably catch up with them. Actually, she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them beneath bundles of flax she had laid out. So the king's men went looking for the spies along the road leading to a shallow crossing of the Jordan River. And as soon as the king's men had left, the gate of Jericho was shut and the spies were there in Rahab's house. So Rahab lied to protect the spies. And that saved her and her family. OK, and so sometimes we think, oh, the Bible gives us spiritual principles and these principles we follow no, but no matter what. And that makes us godly. No, the Bible gives us the dynamics of the relationship between God and people. And so sometimes we can get biblical principles that apply in the vast majority of situations, but there are exceptions to that. That's why it requires wisdom. How do we get wisdom? By learning the lessons of walking in the desert. 
All right. So this is a great lesson about how to live life in the Lord and how to respond to him. And Rahab did the right thing. Before the spies went to sleep that night, Rahab went up on the roof to talk with them. I know the Lord has given you this land, she told them. So here she had revelation. She had insight. Remember, she's a prostitute. And remember, if they were legalistic, judgmental people that didn't want to associate with horrible people like that, they would have missed this whole blessing. Rahab and her family would have missed it. Uh, the spies would, might have gotten caught or killed. But instead, they were able to cooperate with the work of the Lord here. <clears throat> she told them, we are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in ter terror. So we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know <clears throat> what you did in Sihon and Og, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, whose people you completely destroyed. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. That's the revelation that's got to happen as we go into the promised land. See it? The Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me and my family since I have helped you. Okay, some people say, <clears throat> since we're saved by grace through faith, works don't count. Yes, they do. Okay, works count for everything except your basic salvation. That's appropriated by Christ and Christ alone. You get that by faith through grace. All the rest of the time, works count. All right. So here she says, give me some guarantee that when Jericho is conquered, you will let me live along with my father and my mother, my brothers and sisters, and all their families. We <clears throat> we offer our own lives as a guarantee for your safety, the men agreed. If you don't betray us, we will keep our promise and be kind to you when the Lord gives us the land. See, they're making an agreement here. Then, and by the way, I think in our modern world, we Christians need to be pretty good at keeping our word. And when situations change that we can't keep our word, we need to explain that thoroughly. So that when we make a, co a commitment or when we um, say we're going to do something or be somewhere or whatever, that needs to be a bond. And here we see them making a deal. And because everybody kept the deal, it turned out very well. Then since Rahab's house was built into the town wall, she let them down by a rope through the window, escape to the hill country, she told them, hide there for three days from the men searching for you. Then when they have returned, you can go on your way. Before they left, the men told her, we will be bound by the oath. It was just an agreement, a handshake deal. All right. Bound by the oath we have taken only if you follow these instructions. So here are the terms. When we come into the land, you must leave the scarlet rope hanging around the window through which you let through which you let us down. And all your family members, your father, your mother, your brothers, and your relatives must be here inside the house. If they go out into the street and are killed, it will not be our fault. But if anyone lays a hand on people inside this house, we will accept the responsibility for their death. If you betray us, however, we are not bound by this oath in any way. Betrayal is a big deal. Keeping your word is a big deal. Making an agreement with somebody is a big deal. I've had multiple hundred thousand dollar agreements with other people with land or buildings or whatever, where it was just a handshake. We didn't need lawyers. We didn't need contracts. We didn't need anything. Right now, I'm doing a big deal with uh, just a, a verbal agreement that we made on a back porch of a home. And, and everybody's going to keep their word with it. Everybody's going to do what they said. And this idea of trust, the more you trust, things get less expensive and more efficient. The more there is mistrust, 
things get more expensive and less efficient. All right. So trust is what makes the world go around. I accept your terms, she replied, and she sent them on their way, leaving the scarlet rope hanging from the window. The spies went up into the hill country and stayed there for three days. The men who were chasing them searched everywhere along the road, but they finally returned without success. Then the two spies came down from the hill country, crossed the Jordan River, and reported to Joshua all that had happened to them. The Lord has given us the whole land, they said, for all the people in the land are terrified of us. How do they know that? Rahab told them. So everybody, listen, all we have to do is walk in this plan. Understand the way the personality of the Lord is toward us and the way our personalities are toward him. How our personalities work with the other people in the body of Christ and how their personalities work with ours. And so the body of Christ works together efficiently and our relationship with the Lord is dynamic and alive and growing. And we can live in the wonderful gifts he desires to give us. That's his plan for us. It's awesome. Okay, everybody, that's enough for today. You have a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless. Mm -hmm.